Storms test your threshold. See, so you say, I can't, I can't live another day. Yes, you can. Can't take any more stress. Yes, you can. Jesus tests your threshold. It's nasty of him to do this, but you know, he's the Lord of the storm. <laughs> Not much you can do about it. <laughs> and he's very powerful too. He's walking, makes as though he would go further in order to test their threshold. He's pushing them, pushing them, unbelievable pressure unbelievable pressure. And the storm you're in right now may be putting you under so much pressure that you don't know what your name is. But you know that God has a plan in this, even if you don't see the plan right now. And third, control issues are dealt with in the storms of life. In the boat, all of their personal sense of self-preservation was being challenged. They were in survival mode. You go from survival mode to trust mode to reality mode. They're at the point now where they're about to die, and that's usually when God intervenes. He'll walk right up, but he keeps testing your threshold. He keeps having you push the envelope of the metal you're made of. And you know, storms don't put anything in you. They reveal what's in you. You know, hard times don't make you anything. They reveal what's in you. And there are so many things that are in our hearts and we don't even know it until we get in a boat and the boat gets in a storm and then all of a sudden you start hitting thresholds and you go, oh, I didn't know I was that nasty. <laughs> When's the last time you said some nasty thing and said, was that me? You know, <laughs> there is no Craig, there is only Zool. You know, have you ever, you're pr only pressure, only pressure, only a storm will bring out what's in you. You can play church with other Christians and say all the right words and smile and do all, but when you're in a storm and you're in survival mode and if God doesn't step in, you're dead. There's a different sense of testing that happens in that moment. And there are things about you that are brought up. Self-preservation is challenged. See, we have such a sense of self-preservation and it's a God-given gift. But you know, we sometimes try to maintain such, maintain such control over our lives that it has to be absolutely wrestled from us in the midst of a storm. Now, a lot of you have been through your storm. So this is just simply instructive uh, so that you can sort of put a label on it and go, well, that's what that decade was. <laughs> yeah, it was the storm of the Lord. And God was watching you. He was in sovereign control. He was pushing you to the threshold, but he was most, most of all challenging your personal control of your life. You know, People that come to God usually have gone through a life crisis. People say, oh, yeah, well, you know, folk get religious when things don't go their way. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> when you're forced to see how utterly dependent you are, when you're forced by a, a survival mode in the midst of a storm, that's when honesty strikes you for the first time. You know, you have been as fragile. You just didn't realize it. We're one little wound away from being laid up in a hospital for six weeks and never able to walk properly again. We're one step away from a, a felt sense of our own dependence. Well, Jesus in the midst of storms is trying to surface our need to control and he confronts it in the midst of the boat and that's not pretty. And by the way, we've seen some of you folks in survival mode. It ain't pretty because the nastiness that comes out, it's like we need to lock you up in a room with a bataka to have you say some more flowery things. You know, God can handle your anger. He can handle your rage. He can handle your cussing. He can handle it. If he can't, then he's not God. You're not going to knock God off the throne. I see Christians editing themselves all the time. You know, well, I shouldn't say that because, you know what? He can handle you. Really? You're not going to knock the Holy Trinity off the throne with your little rage attack in the car at midnight. I like to drive. because I have so many kids that I got to be proper for. So I get in the car, go by myself. Lord have mercy. I looked over one night and I'm just cussing my head off and telling God how to run his universe. And I look over and there's a policeman staring right at me. And I went, hi, how you doing? You know, I'm on the phone here. It's one of the, you know, it's, oh my God. <laughs> Thank God that's not, if you put a tape in my car and I don't want to hint at anything, but God can handle you coming to an end of yourself, especially your demonic grip of control. Sometimes we can't have anything flow in our lives because we're choking it to death with our sense of needing to control. It's our self-preservation. Jesus knew he had to put him in the boat in the storm to confront that. And that's why most people accept Christ at, at, at tension moments. You know, when, there's a, when the wind's blowing softly in the east and your condos are all paid for and you've got a million dollars in the bank, huh? who needs God? You do every second for your little brain to fire right, for you to have that thought, 
to even draw breath, his breath, to deny his name. Loved one, storms are inevitable, but we are not to be storm free. We're to be storm proof. And that's what God's sort of doing in our lives. Once you go through a few storms, it's like it's good to you after a while. Well, the fourth, <laughs> not really, the fourth thing <laughs> is don't be critical of someone else's storm. Just a little bit of hint of advice. Don't be critical over someone else's storm. Well, you know, how, why is it that when it happens to you, it's a test. When it happens to them, it's a judgment. Well, it's clear the Lord had to deal with them accordingly. We were all praying for them for a long time. Why is a storm a test for you and a judgment from God upon them? Don't judge somebody else's storm. Okay, you don't, you know, there's gold guys in glory, gold gals in glory, the three G's, that's it. The only the shell game the devil's been playing. And they and usually one of the three will hook you. You know, and, and but once you get free of one of them, then you're tempted in pride to sit in judgment over everyone else's weakness. I can't believe he's still in spiritual kindergarten. <laughs> oh, my, 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 my. Loved one, don't you dare. The only reason you haven't committed the same sin is because God couldn't trust you to be tempted in that area because you would have hair lipped the whole town if it was left up to you. <laughs> Well, I'd never commit adultery. And God's going, yeah, don't ever let her be tempted either. My goodness, you know. <laughs> don't be critical of someone else's storm. I hear it all the time. Their issue may not be your issue, but you know what? There's an old story Pastor Rick, my friend, used to tell me about the, the birds flying, you know, and he's caught in a, in a snare. And the rabbit's looking up laughing and mocking him as the rabbit's caught in a box going for a carrot <laughs> and the bear is looking at the bird caught and <laughs> the rabbit caught and the bear is laughing at them and he steps in the bear trap. <laughs> We've all got issues and we need to walk in humility. John Bunyan said, he who is face down has no fear of falling. Don't criticize somebody else's storm because you don't want that happening in the middle of your storm. Isn't it fun to have your storm misread where you feel led to walk around and go, no, 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 this isn't a judgment. It's just a test. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm so spiritual. The enemy's got a bullseye on my forehead. You know what? There's always going to be someone that's going to judge your storm, but don't do it. Just don't do it because you never know what God's going for in that individual's life in that storm. In fact, it may be the preparation to their blessing and you may have to go and apologize to them. So just don't do it. <laughs> Fifth, don't try to stop someone else's storm. Loved one, we love people so much that we take them off the cross where Christ has put them to die. There are people in your life that are going through storms and your instinct is to stop them from going to, I love them so much, I'll take the nails out of their wrists and nurse them back to health so that God can heal them and then nail them back on the cross again. You know, there are carnal things in our lives that need to die and they need to be crucified. And so often we, in false love, try to circumvent the will of God by stopping somebody's storm. You can even try to use God's name to stop one of his storms. He's amused. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the storm of the Lord to stop. Oh, and then he eats popcorn. He goes, look at this, Gabriel. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> they're rebuking me in my name. Look at this. Isn't this cute? Oh, and they're quoting my, my Bible to me, too. Oh, and then that <laughs> Don't try to stop somebody else's storm. Don't try to deliver people out of storms that God has put them in, or you may wind up in the boat with them. <laughs> Don't try to stop the storm. So, you know, when God's, you know, there are things in us that, that need to die and there's things in us God is raising from the dead. Let's just make sure the things he's nailing to the cross stay there and let them die with dignity. Don't die all over the set. And by the way, don't use storms to get attention. Don't misuse your storm. 